welcome back to They Did What, your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories, where I go over them, analyze them, and most certainly make one of them. Today, going to go over a story titled, Life After Death, and a big shout out to Mark for sending me this story. And guys, this story is hands down one of the best revenge stories I've heard in a while. This is about a guy, he is, I believe, 30 years old. His wife is 29. He's been with her for seven years and married for six of the seven. Got married way too quick. And you're going to see, guys, that just like a lot of these unfortunate stories, this guy gets burned pretty bad by her initially. She has an affair with one of her co-workers, the whole nine yards, and really does everything she can to humiliate this guy. Behind the scenes, of course. However, even though the guy gets burned pretty badly, oh, doesn't come close to the, the revenge he puts on her. It is definitely a good one. But there's a lot of lessons in this story, guys. There's definitely five separate occasions where this guy deserves a big smack for making boneheaded mistakes that, in fairness, he was young, made a lot the things that young people don't, things young people do, and don't realize at the time how foolish it is until they get older and wiser and all that. And I'm definitely going to make that aware so that hopefully some guys who watch this may not make the same mistake he does. But let me tell you guys, it's definitely a good one. So it starts off, he says here, The last 10 days have been disorienting. I discovered my wife in a full-blown two-month physical affair. I ghosted her, moved halfway across the country where my best friend took me in. I traveled to Canada to work for five days and now waiting for a connection for a flight to get back to my friend's halfway house where I hope to resurrect my life. Please excuse my hyperbole, emotional outbursts, and ranting. I hope to be under control soon. But I need to vent and I need advice about things that I have overlooked. So while he did reveal a little bit there in his intro, doesn't come close to what he does to her. He says, as a backstory, my wife and I are not legally married. We've been together for seven years and had a commitment ceremony six years ago, performed by two state-sanctioned officiants, but never obtained a license. Smack. That's the first one. Why? Because he knew her. He's, he's known her for set. They've been together for seven years. Married six out of the seven, which meant he had his their commitment ceremony off the books being married after one year knowing each other. That's crazy. You don't ever do that. You take years to get to know someone if you're even going to go down that path. And unfortunately, he learns the hard way. <clears throat> he says here, we uh, obtained, we introduced each other as husband and wife, wear rings, and tattooed our initials on each other's gen- genitalia er- genital area. He says, yes, really, it seemed like a good idea, 22. Boneheads. So, what does that tell me? She didn't want to actually marry this guy? Just do a commitment ceremony, nothing official? What does that say about her level of commitment to him? Let's think about that. My wife is an actress. Well, aren't they all? Classically trained Ivy League BFA, Uh, While she has done some TV and movies and even modeling, her passion is theater. She is 29 years old, comes from an affluent family, father is an investment banker, and the mother is an executive director of an arts nonprofit. I am a 28-year-old electrician, have a community college degree, and no family in a conventional sense. So here is the next smack. Smack. Why? Because he married a gal that's completely different than he is in the sense that He said he went to community college, he's an electrician, and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, good for him, that's better than going to school nowadays and racking up massive debts. But he's with a gal who went to an Ivy League school, whose family is obviously wealthy, and they're just not going to mix too well. There are exceptions, but essentially, sounds like she got her guy on the other side of the tracks to have fun with, right? And that tells me why they never had an official ceremony, because probably her parents were against it. Think about that. Investment banker, mom works as a art gallery, nonprofit, that type of thing. You can probably picture them talking about here. They probably want her to be somebody else. Uh, we met shortly after she graduated from college, and she was starring in a production of Romeo and Juliet in Southern California. And I was moonlighting on the lighting crew. I overheard her say that she would like to learn how to surf one day. In an act of courage, I, st- I still barely fathom, I interrupted her conversation. Introduced myself and told her I could have her riding a board the next day. Well, she'll be riding something else as well the next day. Uh, the rest is history. When she left Southern California for her next gig, I went with her again and again. Smack! So, 
he's being the guy. I think we're on my third reason to smack him here. He's being the guy who follows his girl around the country for her different jobs and everything. Not her follow him. You guys have heard the stories. It's a bad way to go if she's leading the relationship in that direction. It's just not a good place. A year later, we had our commitment ceremony. Smack too soon. Way too soon. You barely know this girl, man. And commitment ceremony. Why didn't she marry you full a full actual marriage? Probably because mom and dad didn't like it. Then I'd tell you about how important you are to her and her family. I'd followed her from theater company to movie set to theater company ever since. Bad move. About four years ago, I got my break. I got a seemingly perfect job to complement my wife's vagabond career. I was hired to install high-tech, proprietary recreational equipment, he says think cameras and computers, around the country. Over the course of a year, I will spend 40 weeks on the road, typically Monday through Friday. I make great money, great benefits, and can live wherever I have access to a commercial airport. So, that job he described sounds awesome and would be awesome for a single guy. A bachelor or young guy, but not a married man. Now, he doesn't have kids, but still, he's going to be gone 40 weeks of the year, five days a week. That's just not a good place to be, in my opinion. That's where a lot of problems could happen, especially from a gal that couldn't marry you officially, but had to do a commitment ceremony, and who is in the theater. For all you guys that were in high school and college, ever come across theater girls, art girls, artsy types as they call them, they have a, they're a different breed. And they're not ones that uh, you should let out of your sight too long, as you're going to see here. Uh, the work uh, induced separation is not an ideal for a relationship. See? The wife is attractive. Lots of actors in the company have gauged her interest. She would always tell me about those advances. OM, a good looking 40 ish longtime member of the company, made his intentions known when they were first introduced three years ago. She told me about the conversations, told me about his uh, reputation, told me that she found him repulsive and disliked working with him. Yeah, we'll see about that. About a year after my wife began working with the theater company, we were at a party and he was openly hitting on her. After a few minutes, <clears throat> I put him in a hammer lock and made him beg for mercy in a group of 50 to 60 party goers. So this theater guy is openly hitting on this guy's wife. This is a this is an electrician. This is a working class guy who, no problem, put this guy in his place. Problem is, this guy is still around his wife all the time. He apparently has never forgotten that slight. My wife likes the theater company. It does quality work. She gets three months per year to do other things. I can travel readily from an airport half an hour up the road. Everything is, go is good except young couples shouldn't have this kind of separation. Ding, ding, ding. About the 4th of July, I know some distance between my wife and me. I had 12 days off, and she didn't seem particularly eager to spend time with me. I always pay attention to a woman's actions, as I say all the time. I understand it's the height of the season. Somebody from the company is doing this or that. And while she would typically invite me, this uh, interlude, she actively discouraged me from tagging along. What does that say? I wouldn't like the outing anyway. The people are pretentious and would annoy me. It's a girl thing. Whatever. I enjoy mountain biking and white does not. So I stepped up my biking game and then got back in the rhythm, rhythm of the work. Uh, D-Day came crashing down on, on me 10 days ago. A couple times a year, the various members of the traveling installed teams meet at the mo mothership for training. Story swapping, marketing, instruction, etc. I was flying back home late Tuesday night and texting, calling my wife to let her know I'd be arriving a day early and see if I should get a lift or she would pick me up. She had a performance at night, and my flight would arrive after it ended. He says, sometimes the cast, or some portion of it, will go out for dinner or drinks after a performance. It's a long-established practice, and again, I'm always invited. I find actors self-absorbed and tedious, so I generally pass. It's what I hear about them. I assume my wife was at a post-performance meetup, but the fact that she never responded to my texts or voicemails was unprecedented. So again, let's review. She's been acting distant lately, suddenly not inviting him to gatherings and such, which ordinarily he'd be invited to. And he's been with her for seven years, so, you know, he knows her behavior, knows patterns. And now she's not picking up, responding to texts, etc. What could she be doing? <clears throat> I got home just before midnight, and there was no sign of her. 
I tried texting and calling again. Crickets. Finally, I remembered the battered old MacBook Pro, which we use exclusively for streaming movies and sports. It is synced to her phone. I could check her text messages and see where she was or what she was doing. At this point, I was concerned about her physical safety. Well, notice this good guy here is not, uh, at this point, suspecting anything. He's worried about her and her safety. And wait till you see what's going on here to show just how much she repays his caring and loving nature. After a few minutes, my world collapsed. The last three months of texting between my wife and OM are revealed in what I guess folks can call an emotional affair that turned physical around August 1st, detailing what they did and what they planned to do and when. And the worst of all, it included an edited version of an SCX tape. There you go, the same guy that she found, found, said she found repulsive and was hitting on her at the party in front of him and he put in a headlock or whatever. He's the one nailing his wife. Shocker. <clears throat> he says, TMI, I don't know the rules here, so the following may be inappropriate but makes, makes my subsequent reaction more comprehensible. I don't want to offend anyone and I apologize if I had violated a boundary. Skip forward to resume if you don't want to need this information. Now he's going to get and list the, the details of what he saw in the video. And let me tell you, uh, cover your ears or cover your uh, cover your ears. I'm about to say this may offend you because it is pretty graphic. He says, the tape appears to be the last three minutes of a recent S-word account between my wife and OM. He is doing her doggy and pulls out bareback. He slaps her on the butt and she obediently rolls over to her side, kind of like Cleopatra and extends a hand towards him. He proceeds to finish on her wedding ring and then lays down on her back and raises her hips and he completes his load on my initials tattooed above her pendulum. <clears throat> she giggles about how despicable he is and then licks his love, love juice off of her body. He says, Chump Chains, his nickname for me, this is what you get for being a cock block. Holy freaking shit. It's bad now she's having an affair. It's bad now she's cheating on him with this guy and doing what she's doing. But this goes to a whole new level. She is deliberately, through the, through their actions of him spraying his man juice on her wedding ring and also the tattoo of his initials on her southern region as a way to humiliate him, to make him look terrible, all that. That goes to show you how she really feels about this guy here. I mean... That would just rip, an, that would make an ordinary guy's heart just be ripped, st ripped out, stomped on the ground, all that. And our guy's hurting here. But let me tell you, I had to read that so you understand why he does what he does. And holy crap. He says, you're my reaction. I vomited again and again. Dry heaves. I've never done that before. Uh, I felt suicidal and dizzy, overwhelmed. I collapsed on the floor, kind of passed out in the bathroom. Then I awoke from the pinging from the computer. She was texting someone. Him. She had just left his place and was walking home. You can do, this, do that in this town. It's remarkably safe. Nonetheless, she's texting him because she's concerned about her, her safety. They are also reliving tonight's sexcapade. Apparently, there is another video forthcoming. She's excited and she will pleasure herself to it tomorrow. This is what she's saying. She's a few minutes away and I am paralyzed. So after all that, here she comes. And, and what does he do? Is he going to explode on her? Or pretend nothing happened? Play cool and plan his revenge. I shut down the computer, turn the lights off, and jump into bed. A few minutes later, she comes in. I pretend to be asleep. She, just, she jostles me, kisses me, and starts up a conversation about how much she misses me and why I didn't call her. She's trying to kiss him after knowing what he she was doing with that guy? Uh-uh. Oh, hell no. She says that her phone has been acting up, and maybe that's why she missed my text. Yeah, sure, wifey. She is naked and coming on to me, but I tell but I, I, but I tell I picked up a virus on the road, and maybe we shouldn't sleep together. I offer to move to the couch, and the night ends for her. As I lie on the couch, I consider my next move. I can live anywhere with my job. I have a, f a very few roots in this town apart from my wife, but we are not married. I can pack up my life in two duffel bags and a snowboard and be out of this nightmare. In 10 minutes, I resolve to do just that. I go to the stoop and call my best friend I've known since junior high and co-captains of the high school football team. 
His family took me in when my family collapsed when I was 15. He was one of the co-officiants in the commitment ceremony. He is someone who I can call at 4 o'clock in the morning, and he will take my call without hesitation. Now that is a brother. Now he just mentioned that his family collapsed when he was 15, which tells me why he rushed into a marriage with this girl, making up for what he lacked as a kid. He is also recently divorced and living in Texas with four other losers in a six-bedroom house. One of them is heading to Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia for four to five months adventure. I can have a spare bedroom until I figure things out and what to do, or until I don't. Uh, breakfast the next morning is awkward. She seems to sense I know something is amiss. Of course she does. Women are not stupid. And also she's going to be on her guard because obviously she's cheating and, and taking that to a whole new level. But women can sense things the way a man typically doesn't sense things. They, they have that sixth sense. Uh, I keep saying I don't feel well. Vomiting instead of sleeping will do that. She nonetheless insists on a passionate kiss, and I'm thinking, what the F last time? Uh, no, there's no way I would kiss her, let alone a passionate kiss. Even if she chugged a whole bottle of Listerine, I still wouldn't do that after what I saw. Uh, I'm gonna, I tell her I'm going to the pharmacy to get something for my stomach, and, af- and that afterwards I have an appointment to get my teeth cleaned. Not true. Instead, I go to the property manager for our apartment. I tell him that my lease, the housing is boring, so it's in my name, is up at Thanksgiving, but there are dozens of students starting college this week on Craigslist list that are desperately looking for housing now. We have a house-sitting gig, and we can move out now. Will you let us out of the lease in September and lock one of the Craigslisters in for about another year at a substantial price increase? And he says yes. So if you haven't picked up on this, the apartment they're living in is in his name. He went to the leasing office, told the guy, hey, we can get out of here right now. Would you like to give it to somebody else that's younger and and they'll pay you more? And the leasing office is like, sure. Next, I go to the Salvation Army. Could they pick furniture and clothing donations Thursday afternoon from my apartment? Wifey will be here, will be at her Thursday afternoon matinee performance. By 2 p.m., the couch, chairs, dining room set, Marital bed, apartment size washer, dryer, television, microwave, and all my wife's entire wardrobe is in trash bags, except for all her panties are on a truck heading for the Salvation Army. Electricity, water, internet, all are in my name, all off within 48 hours. My mail is forwarded to Texas. Essentially, the only thing left in my apartment is a pile of panties and the old MacBook with a text conversation and video loaded. This guy, while she's gone, had them box up everything. Every piece of furniture, all her clothes, belongings, whoosh, off to the Salvation Army. And he had everything planned to shut everything down, electricity, internet, all that within 48 hours. But probably much quicker than that. Oh, can you imagine when she comes home? He says, uh, I downloaded SCX tape number one and number two, which has arrived in the meantime. I upload them using her email and send them to her parents, sister, grandmother, the artistic director of the theater company, the board of directors of the company. Text of the email says something to the effect of, my career is stagnating a bit, thinking about going a different direction. What do you think? Send it to all of them, huh? And I bet you her parents think that she is just a sweet, adorable little daughter of theirs. I drove the family car, in my name of course, to a sleazy used cars lot in town with the airport. I make a terrible deal to sell the car. The phone is starting to blow up. Gee, who could it be? Wife is leaving messages, texting, and emailing. I haven't had time to block that shit right now. Friday in Texas will be good for that. I take a $2,500 hit on the car, but I'm free of the last entanglement. Lift to the airport, flight to... uh, Texas, red eye, cannabis, and sleep to Texas. A little more cannabis in Texas and 15 hours of sleep on Friday. I meet my, my, I meet my new roommates. And he says, think 30-something version of Animal House. College football all day Saturday, NFL football all day Sunday. New phone number, new email. FYI, Canada work on Monday. Life begins again. I think you folks can call to 180. Doing it this way has worked wonders for me. Let me know what I have overlooked. Thanks for putting up with my my vent. It was cathartic. So there you go, guys. It was a longer one, but the bottom line is this. A lot of lessons in this story. This guy did mess up 
in a lot of ways, as I pointed out. Married way too young, but yet married, commitment necessary, a gal who didn't actually want to go through the actual process. Giant red flag. Met, got involved with a gal who... <clears throat> This guy was the other side of the tracks compared to her lifestyle. Again, red flag and, and definitely smack there in the other one. Got a job, which would be great for a bachelor, where he's gone 40 weeks of the year. Definitely a bad way to go because with a, with a married to a theater chick, bad way to go. That's another a mistake that was made. Also, the fact that uh, she he was following her around the country, letting her basically lead the relationship in that direction, always a bad way to go. So there were a lot of mistakes that he made, but he was young. Obviously, you can see because his family fell apart, fell apart when he was 15, that maybe he wanted to, he rushed into things and rebuild it with her. And of course, by the way, 22 years old, got that serious with her. All these are mistakes. But that doesn't justify by any means what she did to him. And I guarantee you, that wasn't the first time she was cheating on him. It was going way back. And of course, getting involved with a theater chick, an artsy girl, if you will. Again, those free spirits, bad idea. Those types should be with other people in that industry, in the theater, blah, blah, blah. End of story. So he made mistakes, but you know what? She's a hundred times worse. And, and the fact that not only was that guy plowing her, but just doing all those things, shooting his man juice on the wedding ring, amongst other things and all that, making fun of him, unforgivable. So I love what he did. Awesome revenge. He didn't cry about it. Beg her back. Some of that simp shit. Oh no. He planned his revenge. And is it possible this is bullshit? It's possible. But you know what? I've, I've heard and seen plenty of revenge situations in my life. I think it's real. And I think it's hilarious. And he moved on. And the great thing about the whole thing was, yeah, he was never officially married to her. So he was able to pick up and leave. And everything was in his name too. So it was so much easier. Can you imagine her coming back and finding out... The apartment's not yours anymore. The car is gone. All your clothes are gone. All your belongings, except for your panties that he left there, and the laptop. So I guess you could get in the apartment. Yeah, they weren't out yet, but the point is, it was already going to be gone. Hilarious. Now, the sad thing is that her family's wealthy, so she'll be able to get back on track real quick. But I love that he sent that video to all her family, including her grandma. That's definitely one they're not going to forget anytime soon. So anyway, guys, while he made a lot of mistakes, and he was young when he did it, Obviously, this guy, I'm hoping, learned. So hopefully, you guys can learn something from the mistakes he made. Wrong type of girl and all that type of stuff. So definitely an entertaining one. All right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me just think about this. And guys, you come across a good story like to share, definitely email it to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just give me some time to get to, and I definitely will. And if you like the video, share with your friends and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.